Abraham, my life has transformed in the six months I've been practicing your teachings. I'm a living testament to everything that you say. And it's getting better. It's not complete because it never will be. But I have this question, not but, and I have this question on the heels of the guy that was just here. Yeah. What, w- w- why is the universe and our non-physical cells organized around fun? And what is the context in which... We don't think it's organized. It's not that it's organized around fun. It's organized around alignment. And alignment is clarity, and clarity is fun. Okay. Clarity is timing. Clarity is detail. Clarity is precision. Clarity is excellence. Clarity is, is expansion. And so the law of attraction insists on more that is like it. And so the universe is organized around vibrational frequencies, law of attraction, which accomplishes momentum. And if that momentum is leading in the direction of the alignment of who you really are, then that reuniting with who you really are and being focused in this moment is fun. Ah, okay. it's sort of like going to play in the snow and having all the snow gear so that you're you're warm so so that preparation that was before now in the moment of now doesn't detract from what's happening it's it's like that it's like unless you have taken the time to align with all you really are then in the absence of all you really are in this moment there will be less fun because there will be less clarity and there will be less insight and there will be less appreciation and there will be less awareness and so by fun we mean by fun we mean fullness wholeness Mm -hmm. allness Mm -hmm. bigness Mm -hmm. got it so so the follow-on question is, and this one might be too much for my limited human mind, what is the, the... If you can ask the question, you can receive the answer. Okay, that's great then. So what is the context in which that fullness, wholeness exists? Like we are here on this planet, and this planet is in this solar system. The solar system is in the, is in the cosmos. The cosmos, I think, fits in something. Where does non-phys- What is the context in which non-physical... S- Sits. It's in every particle of everything that you know as reality. But, but you have, in order to really understand this, you have to separate consciousness from what you want to call physical manifestation. That's why we want to call the most important manifestation that you will ever experience emotion. Emotions. Because emotion is a, is a in other words, a feeling is something that, that, that is not tangible in the sense that a car is or Mm -hmm. a chair is and yet it's the reason for everything that you desire is to produce that feeling and so it's beingness it's consciousness beingness it's vibration so first there is We're just going to talk about this in a sort of scanty way. First, there is, let's say, vibration. And it's not that focused, and so it's not that interesting. But if momentum is allowed, non-resistant momentum, so it's not zeroing itself out, it's allowed to gain momentum, the vibration will become a thought. Mm -hmm. And simultaneously, the thought can be translated or understood or perceived or comprehended in the form of emotion. So vibration to there. Now, certainly there are other ways that that could be explained with more detail, but we don't think anything that you need to think about is, we don't think there's anything more than you need to think about other than that vibration that was allowed momentum became thought and emotion. So that's creation, and, but now it has become thought, now it's focused. Now, now in focusing upon that thought, now 
inspiration begins to flow. And what inspiration is, is just the increase of the momentum of that thought. So now the thought is turning into something more. So we're talking about how vibration turns to thoughts and thoughts turns to emotions and emotions turns to words and, and to actions and to... And so here you sit in a world that is talking and doing and having and moving things around, but you lose your place in this consciousness thing. Mm -hmm. So then we come along and we want to remind you that you are the extension of consciousness. consciousness. You are the tangibleness, the manifestation of consciousness. But you, you lose your place in your connection with all that consciousness. And you focus on the tangibles. And because of the variety of the tangibles, you focus on some of them that deprive you of the full consciousness. You're still with us if you are, bless your heart. <laughs> <laughs> so now, now you all, we've come to this place where what we're reveling in is the acknowledgement that in this physical body that you are so much more and that you are consciousness that is displayed in this physical body, but that there is more consciousness than you or any other human have been willing to allow yourself to receive the benefit of that is still there, potentially there for you. So here you are, for whatever reason, having fun, tuned in, tapped in, turned on, and the fullness of all you are focused here with you, making this moment in time more meaningful, more satisfying, more pleasurable, more alive, and everything in all of the universe exists for, for that. that. I got it. And so consciousness that is awareness it's like the thing that you play with all the time. If the tree falls in the forest and there's no one there to hear it, did it make a sound? And we want to say sort of in the same vein of thinking, consciousness, the consciousness of the universe that isn't realized isn't fun. It isn't satisfying. You could almost say it is non-existent until it is brought into perception by some focuser. I see. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. I see. So that means that all of this consciousness that you sense that you want to talk about is, in a sense, we'll just say it because it's us. It doesn't, we're not going to hurt our own feelings. <laughs> it's meaningless mm. without this focused place. You, when we say you are the leading edge of all that we are, we mean you are the realizers of all that we are and all of the consciousness that is us is focused in this moment. That's why it's so big and that's why it feels so good when you let it flow and it feels so bad when you pinch it off. I feel that. So it's, it's, are, we the, are we the only things in the universe that is on that leading edge here on planet? Not not just in all the universe, is planet Earth the only place where the leading edge is taking place? No. There okay. are many other physical realms where the leading edge is taking place. Okay. So here's something personal. So, I mean, so let's ask another okay. question that's sort of for you to get your thought around. So dirt is consciousness and sources flowing there too. What do you think Source doesn't have to choose whether it is consciousness flowing in dirt or whether it is consciousness flowing in this human mind that is you. But doesn't it sort of make you understand why you chose to be yes, you rather absolutely. than rather than dirt? Rather than dirt, yes. <laughs> yes. And aren't you appreciative of all of the consciousness that's keeping it all together? Yes. For, but doesn't it make you revel in the leading edge creator that is you? Yes. And so good. Okay, so, so my next, you answered this, the second question I had, which was, does all, is all this happening simultaneously now? Yes. And does that mean any choice that happens, happens now, whether it's happening or not happening, it's happening now? The only, the only, whether, whether, sometimes people want to talk about time. Yes. And we want to talk about before and now. 
In other words, this conversation has never been before. This conversation has never been before. So the universe is expanded as a result of this conversation. So it has become more. And everything is about that. It's about becoming more. So ask your question again. The question was, does everything happen? Are all potential possibilities existing in the now? All of them are existing in the now, but all of them are not being realized right. in the now because everyone's not queued up to, re to be the full receiver. But the, the, you're not ever going to run out of nows. And so you have, and you have to put that in your question because, because now just keeps happening because right. consciousness just keeps expanding and source just keeps flowing and there is no ending to any of that. Okay. So there's nothing, no reason to measure any of it. There is only reason to enjoy it in the now. I see. So it's a, it, it's a matter of pinching yourself off from the realization of life or embracing the realization of life. It's sort of like you don't want somebody else to make all the decisions for you. And when they do, even if they're good decisions, you don't feel very good about it. No, I don't. You want, because you want to be the realizer, the realizer of consciousness. You want to be the translator of vibration into the awareness or the perception that is you. You want that. And when you allow it, it is so delicious. That's so now let's take this back because we're talking about vibration. It, it is n not as tangible as you might want it to be. We're talking about non-physical which is difficult for you to get your thoughts around. So we want to bring this home to where you are. We want you to do your best to embrace these truths. You are consciousness that you don't, in this moment, in this physical body, have the ability to perceive fully. You're too big to contemplate all of that which you are in any moment in time. No moment in time can, can broaden itself enough for the full realization of all that you are. But every moment in time, in every moment in time, you have the ability to accomplish a vibration of non-resistance so that your ability to perceive consciousness that is you as it relates to this moment in time in other words, it's like you don't have to eat all the food that you will eat to keep your body alive today. And that's a really good thing. You can have a meal or two or three or four or five or six today. In other words, you can sort of take it as it comes. And that's the way all of us are as consciousness. So we, in our non-physical form, have the capacity to understand the wholeness of all of this. When you talk about the universe, when you talk about the universe and beyond, we have the ability to perceive it, but we do not have a vibrational frequency that we can present to any of you, including Esther, that would give her the, the sound foundation that would give her the words that would explain all of that to you right now. That would be like asking you to eat all of the food that you're going to eat all of your life right now. But we do have, you do have the ability to live life. And you do have the ability to come to your own awarenesses and your own awarenesses of what you don't want and what you do want. You do have the ability to feel your own vibration. And so we explain to you in very rudimentary terms that you are source energy in a physical body, but that you are usually not allowing the source energy part of you to be very present. And then we spend all of these years and write all of these books with one singular intention in mind. We want you to soften up enough, enough to allow all that you are to be present. And that's enough. Because not one of us ever said, we're going to contemplate the entirety of the universe all at once. What we all always said, it's what you said when you decided to come, it's what we're saying to you now, and it's what you know best of all. This leading edge place is where it's all at, right here and now. The components that surround you right all of us right here and now that's enough okay. it's enough for the satisfaction of all